Welcome back. You are watching DXB today. And I'm really excited about our next segment because we're talking all things etiquette with Taylor Elizabeth, the founder and director of the Elegance Advisor Consultancy. I'm so excited you're here. Thank you so much for having me. <laughs> I feel like I'm always a little clueless when it comes to etiquette, especially when you've got so many countries and cultures involved. I mean, let's start off with the biggest question today, which is what is cross-cultural etiquette? Okay. So cross-cultural etiquette, and I, I loved that discussion about how in Dubai, we really are always in every situation and also during Ramadan and other things, I guess different cultures, different religions all together. This is probably the most cosmopolitan environment. So we can talk about it in the Dubai context. Which yeah, is, let's do it. Yeah, which is, you know, just under, it's basically starting with your mindset. So cross-cultural cross etiquette is having an understanding of other cultures, of the behavior in other cultures. For example, in a business environment, how business is done in other cultures. But it starts way before knowing the skills, which are like how to do it or what you should do or what you shouldn't do. It starts with our mindset. And I think in Dubai every day, we have a wonderful opportunity because we're engaging with so many people from so many different countries to really test and progress and develop that mindset of being open, being curious, wondering about, you know, not, we always have those moments where we feel a little uncomfortable in situations where maybe we're new or we don't know anyone or we don't know this culture or we have maybe preconceived notions about it. Well, that moment of being uncomfortable, lean into that moment and you know, say, okay, I'm gonna learn here. It's that, it's that, that's basically what it is. So it starts with our mindset and then it goes into the skills of understanding, which is doing research, understanding how cultures are do things different. Ask people, actually ask people. I mean, it's good to know the rules of etiquette. It's important to know the rules of etiquette, but it's also really important to respectfully and tactfully ask questions about things. Be curious, always be curious. So Taylor, have you got any tips that you could give us here in the studio of how we can have good etiquette? Yes, okay. So the pillars of etiquette, there are three pillars of etiquette, okay. which is to be respectful, to be honest, and to be considerate. So I think just starting there, to have good etiquette, and I, and I do appreciate etiquette is always thought of, you know, tea parties, or, mm -hmm. you know, sitting up, or the queen, you know, things like this. This is very good etiquette. But all of those things, it comes from this person's, and I mentioned before, this person's mindset. It's how they decide that they want to show up. It's how they, what they embody within themselves first, and then after that, the skills. So I would say good etiquette is to, you know, respect people, to make eye contact, mm -hmm. to try to not lead with judgment, again, to lead with trying to understand things of that nature, and then body posture, how you hold yourself, your body language. You do have amazing posture. You're saying that, what? by the way, and all of us are like, I, we're all, I know, we're, I feel like we've all just grown like this, <laughs> like, so like yes, good yeah, posture, yeah, yeah. yes. But yeah. Good, good, good posture, like, for example, you have mentioned the, the energy that somebody has when you come in. It's it's being aware of self, and then being aware of your energy, and then how that impacts the, the interactions with others. I think that's really where it starts. So that's interesting, because when, because I wonder, because when I think of etiquette, the first thing I think about is behavior. Yes. You know, you have to act a certain way, behave a certain way. But what you're saying is actually soft skills. It's yes. actually emotional yes. intelligence, yes. really, yes. as opposed to, you know, like that. And, you know, is, is, is that really the, um, the biggest uh, misconception people have about what you do? Yes. That, you, that you teach them how to behave instead of essentially how to express yourself honestly and yes. authentically? Yes, thank you so much. That's a wonderful question. I really appreciate it. So yes, that, that is probably the biggest misconception. I think it's with any skill adoption. You, we, need to, we need to shift and adjust our mindset. And then that way, we, the things that we're practicing, we're learning all these skills. Etiquette is a skill. So it's a skill to feel more empowered and more comfortable in situations. I think it's often looked at like it's something uh, you have to be like this or you need to sit like this or you have this is behavior then that, that person is poorly behaved. It's, it's not really like that. It's more this person has invested in understanding themselves, how they behave, and they've invested in understanding the curiosity in somebody else and they've decided to kind of to kind of match the two and so develop the behavior, the communications and the image. The image is your body language. It's also how you dress because in certain cultures it's very important how you're dressing or how you're behaving or the, what words you're choosing or if you bring gifts or not. Or if, those are the details. Those are the skills and that's something you do through research and understanding but you really really adjusting your mindset and understanding how you communicate, how you behave, how you com how you communicate yourself physically but also through words, non verbal cues, it's very, very important. And the people that I work with and my clients, I do exactly that. We always start with the mindset and then we start with the skills, the soft skills. Taylor, I want to take you back to one of the pillars of etiquette you mentioned, which was honesty. Yes. Maybe it's just me, but I think if I was honest, that would offend more people than if I wasn't. So yes. what do you mean by that, honesty and etiquette? <laughs> Thank you very much. I mean, honesty, we have tact, right? So honesty and tact kind of go together. Also, we're Paris always- doesn't have tact. <laughs> 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 
That should be the pillar for me, tax, yeah. Well, tax is a great skill, actually, to learn. I would, I would encourage everybody, no matter where they think on that they are on that scale, to learn tax or to invest in learning tax. But being honesty is, be honesty, honesty with self first, right? So honesty of like where you are when you're interacting with other people and honestly where our, where our judgment may be lying or where our perspective is lying, where our biases are, because we all have them, right? When we're going into, especially foreign countries, but even here, every day, or everyday interactions here, not just that. So you are being honest with self, but also honest with other people. You're holding yourself to that standard. That's one of the parts of it. Just one last question. When you're talking to clients, do you get people who you're telling them, oh, these cultures, they don't like these certain things. Do you get people like arguing that? So the way that I approach that, and thank you for the question too, the way I approach it is generally speaking, this is what is, it, because there are books. There are books, you have uh, cultural expert, experts, for example, you have attaches and different embassies. There are people that you can refer to for these kind of things. There are stereotypes, as an American, I mean, there are stereotypes that are accurate towards the culture, if you will, but then again, that's not everyone. We can't throw that into a situation everywhere. And things evolve, etiquette evolves. So our behavior evolves, society evolves, everything evolves. So what I do is I say, generally speaking, these are the guidelines however please take into consideration so use use your intellect use use your intelligence and assess but my biggest suggestion is to observe so observe first we have two ears and one mouth so really listen a lot more use our eyes a lot more and just observe and if you don't feel comfortable in a situation just take a little bit of a step step back see what's going on and just mimic what's going on around you or just live to that standard that you have because I think we all know what elegant behavior is in, in a certain way we all know what it is we may not use the right fork in the right way but we know how to behave in a, in I just feel like sometimes you're in a situation and someone says something and you're like oh I didn't do that properly or I didn't say that right I yeah, said yeah. something that wasn't appropriate or I dressed you know, in a way that wasn't appropriate. How do you backtrack at that point? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's always, it's always that moment where you're like, oh my goodness, I wish I could take this back. It's yes. like, redo, <laughs> let's redo this. Uh, no, no, but in that situation, it's it's a learning experience, right? So every single situation, every interaction we have, we always have an opportunity to learn something about ourselves, about the situation, or about another human being. It's, and it's a great thing. If we think about it that way, you're gonna think, okay, next time I'm not gonna do this. But now that I'm here, how am I gonna recover? So it's not so much in what we're saying or how we're behaving or how we behave, but it's how we kind of transition into that next part. So try to do it as smoothly as possible. So you feel awkward, but just think to yourself, <laughs> I'm gonna recover from this because you can recover it. And things are not permanent, you know? So you, you can do it. You just have to have the confidence to do it. Again, this all goes back to mindset in those situations. Thank you so much, Taylor. Taylor Elizabeth, I mean, we're all gonna be sitting a lot straighter for the rest of the episode. <laughs> Today, I'm sure. And thank you so much for joining thank us. Thank you on so DXB much for having today. me. I really appreciate it. Today's spotlight, by the way, is on a non profit organization with a mission to provide medical assistance to children in the Middle East. Partnered with Al Jalila Foundation, these volunteers are here to improve and heal lives. This is a Little Wings Foundation. Take a look. I'm Dr. Mark Sinclair. I'm a pediatric orthopedic surgeon working in Dubai, but I'm here as a co-founder of the Little Wings Foundation, a foundation that treats children with orthopedic conditions in the Middle East without access to healthcare. Well, we've established the charity approximately 10 years ago, and we've established ourselves in Dubai as a grassroots uh, organization. Uh, non-for-profit. We work together with organizations in Dubai and abroad. While opening a foundation is always difficult, you rely on volunteers because we're a fully, fully volunteer-driven organization and also the setup to be allowed to work and collect donations within the country can be challenging. At this point, we're very happy to, to work together with a local charity, enabling us to um, source funds and help children directly in need. Well, our long-term goal is to continue what we're doing. We have uh, really been helping children for, as I said, for more than 10 years. We do have lots of interest in um, our residents here in Dubai. They support us a lot with funds and with active involvement. We have many children collecting funds at schools. We have schools, we have organizations that support us in our helping children. Well, I think Dubai in general is a great place to fulfill dreams. For me, it always has been to um, have a foundation as a part of what I do as a doctor. Here, we, I think we have the extra time, perhaps also the extra funds and the resources and people that are really interested in, in, in world problems to open a foundation as ours. 
I love being here because you can be who you are and I think Dubai is full of opportunities. If you want to be an entrepreneur, if you want to be a philanthropist, if you want to be an artist, if you want to be a doctor, I think there's a space for everybody to move and to grow and participate and most importantly contribute uh, to the needs of the society. Little Wings Foundation, they are incredible and I'm sure their work is going to be coming in handy very, very soon. So thank you to that entire team for all their incredible work. Um, it is now time for the roundup and Amy, what's the buzz in town, Amy? Well, the buzz in town is that Dubai has had a successful bid to host the World Cities Culture Summit. So guys, how do we feel about that? And maybe Saeed, you can yeah. help us <laughs> like, out here because- like, Why are you looking yeah. at us? Look yeah, at Saeed. Saeed. What does that mean for the cultural landscape for Dubai? Well, it just means for me straight away, it's a lot more work. <laughs> that, that's, that's the first thing I'm thinking about. Um, like, but no, but Dubai has a, you know, Dubai has a history, you know, of, you know, of bringing culture summits and culture events together. So I suspect what's going to happen in this event, we're going to be seeing a lot of um, um, leading industry um, thought leaders from, you know, from different cultures, from arts, from arts, film, television, and basically even just about talking about the city itself. And this is also, again, this is part of a bigger thing happening here with COP28. You're seeing a lot of leading um, industry leaders coming here. I think this is what's unique about the UAE in general is like you see some other countries without naming any names, they seem to fight mm. the different elements coming into their culture. They don't like it, but here, Global Village, all these different cultural events, book fairs, we love it, we thrive on it. We love having all these different cultures here. So I'm sure this is just another feather in our cap in that regard. And nothing clashes. Exactly. Every, everything is done to help the other. Like you know, I mean, also, I mean, because because you can come here in just a week. You can go to you can go to um, uh, a, a global village. You can go to the conference. You can go to COP28. You know, the public area. So when you come here, you can actually be. Um, a, you can have a, a really enriching week of just events. So you know that every single per one of us here sitting on the couch is going to be hosting a tourist in the next <laughs> few months, right? Everyone's going to come take advantage of our house. Mm. What kind of experience would you recommend to them, other than the obvious, the Burj Khalifa, all the world-breaking uh, accomplishments, something that would be a cross-cultural experience? Well, look, I always take people to Global Village, first of all, because that, that is something that's really unique. Like, if you're coming from, like, my, my friends, my family from Australia, Global Village, you know, it, it, it blows your mind. Yeah. You, know, it's, you know, it's basically like Disneyland meets a shopping right. festival. It's like, it's, it, it's like the Avengers of, of, of so many different things coming together. So for me, that is actually the, the, always the first stop. And then I always like to go take people on my own little food tour. Like, you know, you know, go, to, you know, um, you know go to the Ethiopian restaurants in Karama. You know, the place, you know, you know, you know, or the, you know, or the show, or go to Malah, you know, a really old school shawarma restaurant. Oh, I could really you know. go for some shawarma yeah. right now. You know, oh. so, so I kind of feel, I kind of feel like just taking people like on this kind of little, you know, in this kind of little pockets. It's, it's, they always walk away, you know, with more memories. And they'll have a different Dubai experience to all their friends who have been to Dubai, yeah. pretty much. I mean, I would just say my favorite thing to do with, is my, my personal favorite to do is go to Global Village on a Tuesday or Wednesday at 11 o'clock at night because you have the whole theme park to yourself. There's something amazing of going on a on a on, on a on a Ferris wheel by yourself at midnight on a Tuesday. Oh, that's really <laughs> Said, you're a very wise man, and we can't wait to talk to you some more. We can't wait to get some more of our guests on. But what's coming up on the show? After the break, we take a look at restaurant recommendations from our favorite food tour guide, Arva, for the best fall off the bone meat in town. Plus a special performance by hit band Hot Rodney, so don't you go anywhere. 